Hey folks, Bob Main from the Handgun World Podcast. Guess what I got? Glock 19 Gen 5. Had to do it. Couldn't resist. So, uh, first shots with the Glock 19 Gen 5. Doesn't cure, uh, doesn't cure, uh, shooting to the left, which is, uh, my fault, not the gun. Thanks. Hey, folks, Bob Main from the Handgun World Podcast. Well, like everybody else out there, I'm going to do a Glock Generation 5 video. So I went ahead and got one uh, about three, four days ago, Glock 19 Gen 5. I'm going to give you more of an everyday guy combat perspective of it rather than the product reviews out there because you can find a million videos on the actual product reviews. As far as a combat handgun that Glock has produced, I'm a big believer in the Gen 5 for a couple of, about three or four important reasons. First of all, I want to talk about the grip. You know, everybody complains about the Glock grip and mainly what they've complained about is the finger grooves, especially people with large hands. Those are gone. But I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on that. What I want to do is I want to spend a lot of time on things like this. First, you can probably see this flared magwell. Okay, the flared magwell is, uh, that's a big deal. That's a big deal on any combat handgun. And also, you can see this little cutout right here. The cutout makes a big difference when you need to rip the magazine out of the gun. Okay, you can get that thumb in there and you can rip it out a lot easier. In fact, you can get one thumb back here, and you can get your index finger right here, and you can rip that out easily. Uh, gang, I do not recommend plugging that space right there for this reason. I see a lot of people do that. I don't think there's any reason to put the plug in there. It's a great place to get this thumb, get this index finger, and rip that magazine out if you have to do that. The other thing that I think that they've done a good job with is beveling the slide. The front of the slide. Now, people have been critical and say, well, you know, they beveled the slide, but they didn't bevel the frame. Who cares? It's still going to cause a lot less drag. If you look at that right there, there's a lot less drag going in and going out of your holster. Finally, Glock put a slide release button on both sides of the pistol. Finally. They finally got with it. All the other manufacturers have been beating the pants off of them with ambidextrous guns. Finally, Glock got with it. The other thing, I'm going to see if you can see this on camera. This, uh, this slide release is farther away from the frame than it is on a Gen 4 or a Gen 5. Okay, That makes it a lot easier to operate the slide release. Matter of fact, see if you can do this with the camera. With my thumb, I can easily reach it without having to change my grip, okay? Without having to change my grip. That's, if you, if you like to use the slide release, that's a big deal. I've always, been, I've always been a big proponent of after you put in fresh ammo using the overhand tug, but if you're the kind of person that likes to use the slide release, they've done a huge job in making that a lot more convenient to do that. All right, the other thing that I want to talk about on these Gen 5s. Glock claims that the barrel is an upgraded barrel. I'm not the kind of guy that can outshoot any pistol. I'm not that good of a shot. So I think any of the generations have a good enough barrel. But for those of you that like to reload, the barrel has standard rifling. So you can shoot lead bullets out of your Glock Gen 5 barrel. Lastly, the last thing I want to talk about is that one thing they did not do that I'm a little bit disappointed with is they didn't undercut this trigger guard. For me, it's not a big deal. I don't have a real bad problem with Glock knuckle. Some people do. I will say, though, that the lack of finger grooves, it does seem to give me a more comfortable grip on the gun. And you might find that it will get rid of Glock knuckle because there's no finger grooves. You don't have those grooves pinching your hand into the trigger guard like, like it is with some people. 
the finger grooves kind of fit me perfectly. Hang on a second. I had the finger grooves taken off of my Gen 3 and I undercut the trigger guard on my Gen 3. I think you can probably see that. For that very reason, I was getting the finger grooves pinching my my knuckle up into the trigger guard and it was causing problems after about like an 800 round uh, two day course. But for those of you, uh, you're gonna like that and the grip four texture is excellent. I also forgot to mention the, uh, the little lip. There's a little lip right here on the floor plate so that if you need to rip that out, you can. Is it worth it? I think for the extra, I think if you shop around 75 or $80 difference, between this and the Gen 4, yeah, I think it's worth it. Especially that flared Magwell and some of the others. Yeah, it's worth the extra $75 or $80. Thanks. Something else I forgot to mention about the internals. If you look at that safety plunger right there, that's a, a reshaped safety plunger. On older Glock models, it's flat. This one, you can see how it's tapered on both sides. Uh, that does make a big difference in the trigger pull. I can feel a big difference in that. Now, let's talk about magazines. Another big improvement of the 5th uh, Gen magazines, the Orange Follower. The Orange Follower gives you a nice visual indicator that your gun is empty. It's usually pretty easy to see that. And it'll take 4th Gen mags. You can use 3rd Gen mags. And obviously, the 5th Gen mags. Let's shoot. And the shooting left is me, not the gun. Thanks for watching.